Welcome back to the Nexus, where we spotlight some of our favorite local businesses. I'm really excited. Um, like always, I always have awesome guests, but today I think you're in for a real uh, treat. Landon Rose is here w from Grindstone. Welcome, Landon. Thank you. Landon is here. like one of my favorite people just to sit around and talk with. So we've had a half an hour of great conversation already. And up. yeah, we're all ready <laughs> to go. We're going to get you guys uh all tuned in to the latest in uh in grindstone and everything that they're doing so yeah. tell us all about yourself and and how you uh started grindstone yeah well awesome so it's super great to be here um i started off how, how far away do we need to be from these You're like good. Can you hear me right? yeah I'm good yeah um so i started off uh, grew up on a farm in exeter nebraska which is southwest of lincoln about 45 minutes so yeah grew up with incredibly hardworking uh parents and grandparents and just learned to work hard and sacrifice to get things done at a very young age yeah and yeah i was definitely inspired by you had to do chores lots of chores yeah <laughs> yeah I, we i think i always associated chores with people that had cattle but they're like looking back in my life like there was absolutely chores too yeah. um, we had cattle when i was younger like way way young but um yeah primarily corn and soybeans so did you walk beans yeah so i did actually did a lot of uh detas or not detasseling but pollination which is oh, worse yeah. than detasseling because you have to like you're basically in the field and you have to cross pollinate pollen from to a different tassel it was very, very not fun work. That yeah. sounds I, grueling. Like, wild to think that, that corn I, will like cut you. Oh yeah, wet corn, uh, wet corn, five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning, walking through, done by one o'clock or yeah. four, you know, two o'clock, but still like, yeah, not, would not go back to doing that. <laughs> um, but yeah, You'll take your desk job any day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, I grew up on the farm, worked for dad for, uh, you know, basically all growing up yeah. and, um, then went on to work at several different companies, went to Monsanto for a while, and then uh, gra graduated college and went to Lindsay in Omaha. So mm -hmm. worked at their tech support division, basically helping farmers control pivots with their cell phones. And that cool. was when I got my first look at like, really good look at like technology and how I could, and, and, I, and I loved it, honestly. I, I loved my job, I loved my boss, she was amazing. Literally one of the greatest bosses I ever had. Um, so yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. And then one day there's a pretty pivotal moment where she basically, <laughs> she walked up to my desk and this is so weird. This is like the weirdest thing ever, but I was reading think or grow rich uh -huh. on my desk or on my like computer screen. So if you open up Amazon reads and you download the first chapter of the book, you can actually read from amazon.com, like the think and grow rich book. And so I had downloaded that first sample copy of Think and Grow Rich, and I minimized the screen because like they could tunnel into our computers, they could see what we were doing all the time. Uh -huh. And my boss would constantly be uh, taking laps around the office to see if there was people that needed help on support calls. So in between support calls, I would literally sit there and I would read two lines at a time, Think or Grow Rich, or Think and Grow Rich. And, That's amazing. And, and one day, uh, she like walked up to my desk and she's like, so what are you gonna do when you leave here? And I'm like, thought I was getting fired Right at that time. Like, I'm like, wait a minute. Like, um, <laughs> I love my job. I don't want to leave here. Um, in fact, like I, I want to take Isaac's position, hopefully someday if he graduates to something better. Mm -hmm. And Isaac was our, our lead technician. He was amazing at his job. And I really looked up to him in that way. And so she was just like, no, you're not. <laughs> like she straight up was like, you're not gonna that do is a great boss. She's like, she sees she's like you're not going to do that. Yeah. I'm like, Okay. And I'm like, what do you very, think I'm going to do when I leave here? She was very good at dramatic pauses. Like she had a, a, a keen eye and ear for like dramatic pauses that had an impact. And I think that's why she was so influential. Uh -huh. And so she's like, you're not supposed to be at a place like this working in tech support. You're supposed to run a place like this. And then she walked away from my office, or my desk. That's amazing. That is straight such up, a cool story. I, I think that was straight up like a messenger from God. Like yeah. she, God used her to straight up like tell that message to me because How old were you? Do you remember? 21. Oh 22. my gosh. Yeah. I wish somebody would have told me that when I was 21. Yeah. And I like, I, I definitely like, I was really starting to like amp up how much mm -hmm. I was reading and um, had a lot of interest. Mm -hmm. And I would even, I would pull our lead developers out for lunch from Lindsay and so like they would let me go to lunch with them and um, these are people that are working on incredibly complex software yeah. every day 
and like I, would, I would like code like yeah they're coding they're running um, 25,000 different units at that time were like talking with cellular connection and they were running massive dashboards and reports on like how to how to see all that through so anyway we uh, we ended up uh, or I ended up leaving that job, getting a sales job at a company in town here called Trados, which became my oh, yeah. my first sales job. Uh -huh. Worked there for a couple of years. Um, again, loved my job. I was literally sitting in a bullpen of entrepreneurs, right? So they're all they're all entrepreneurs too. I love their lifestyle. I love their camaraderie. Their level of just like, I mean, it was it was just like a so much testosterone and just awesome to be around. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. Like and you could feel yourself leveling up just by 100%. being in the energy yeah. and yeah, energy the drive. Like energy yeah. and drive are very real things. Like you can feel, um, you know, someone's energy around you. They actually say that that's, that's proven that like within three meters of distance, like they, they say that you can feel the energy change in somebody. I and like, I'm not big on that. all of that. Like I don't mm -hmm. want to sound too crazy and new age here, but, but I, I genuinely <laughs> do fine. think you can, uh, I think you can feel that when you walk into a room yeah. if you're really in tune to it because like I, I was immediately in a better mood when I got into this room because I just yeah. know we're gonna have a great conversation positive um, energy yeah yeah it's, yeah. it's good it so transfers it 100% transfers yeah. it's contagious just like a smile or laughter um, so I, I love that job as well but I got to a day where I basically just told my my bosses I'm like guys I I have to go start a media company because I was I was building up their media department and helping them grow their following online and social media and that was foreshadowing to what I would eventually end up doing uh -huh. even today like incredibly relevant to what I'm doing today yeah and um, I loved it they could it's see really that rewarding. so I'm I'm on the road doing sales calls I'm driving for dollars as they call it so you're out um, in Western Nebraska knocking on farmers doors seeing if they'll take a meeting with you. I then pass the meeting off to somebody that would, you know, hopefully close them for business, and we would we would manage their, manage their uh, buying and selling of grain, or excuse me, their selling of their, their grain uh -huh. um, on the uh, Sh Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and like that, that was very very hard. This is the hardest job I've ever had in my life. Um, Did you have a lot of doors slammed uh, in your face? Yeah, doors slammed, dogs Ugh. barking, like you Ugh. name it. It was it was very difficult. That's um, grueling. Yeah, and but it taught me a lot about like dealing with rejection and like having to, you know, get back up again. And um, and then when you did get a win, it had to be even greater. Oh yeah, yeah. when I got my first, yeah, first sale out there, it was a it was a big deal because your sales cycles can be two three years. Like on, oh, wow. on, on getting somebody actually to do business with you, they have to first hear about your company, which is again, foreshadowing for what I was eventually going to do with my life. <laughs> so, yeah. um, this all sounds very familiar. Yeah. They had to, they had to like, basically, um, they had to know about you first. And so like, you're trying to ask them to get married on a first date is kind of how they were, they were, uh, you know, approaching that or feeling that from you because it's such an intimate thing to manage somebody's sale of their grain. Like that is their livelihood. Mm -hmm. So you're basically saying, I can help you sell that. I can help you make more money. I can help you manage the risk of selling that better. Um, and so like you're, it's a, it's literally like a cold call to trying to get to a close. It's very yeah. difficult. So well, yeah, that is like you said, their livelihood. And it's, yeah. I mean, it's so personal and dear to them that it would be really hard. To yeah, let go of that control. And if they have somebody, if they had somebody else working with them already, uh -huh. already, already difficult. So I, yeah, told, walked in and uh, kind of to make a long story short, walked in and told my bosses, I was like, guys, I, I, uh, I need to go start this company. I have a passion for entrepreneurship. I want to run my own business. I want to grow my own team. Mm -hmm. And uh, immediately the next day, they did like the nicest thing that could have ever possibly done, and they hired me for my first contract. Oh wow, that's I, amazing. Because we had grown such a great relationship together, and. They're still uh, still working with them today. Uh -huh. um, still some of my best friends. So really, really love that. Like a lot of people think when you have to like leave your corporate job that you have to like, you know, that everything's gonna fall apart. Like that's so controllable on the person leaving. Um, True. I, I think that there's a right way to do a lot of those things that doesn't have to be so painful. So started Grindstone. <laughs> um, went full time into Grindstone, I should say, in May of 2018. I was doing it as a side hustle since 2016 in October. And literally started off in a 92 square foot apartment or not apartment um it was in my apartment bedroom first and then i got a 92 square foot office in a basement with no no windows and uh i i was like pumped though yeah like, <laughs> I, like was my so first office. <laughs> I was so happy like i i had my yeah. first office i had my place where i could go to work for 
12, 14, 16 hours a day. And like, I literally, I did nothing else when I got that office. It's just work, network, produce, um, mm -hmm. shoot, edit. And I had gotten some, some reps from some, from videoing. I did a hundred videos for trade offs before I left my job. Um, because I was helping them do something called the morning minute, which is just a one minute synopsis of the markets, how they, uh, how they, um, how they're doing that day and then they would give their commentary. Okay. And so I had some kind of experience with that and um, leverage that experience to then go to the next part, which was filming video commercially for people yeah. and getting getting content to help them drive their marketing. Yeah. So what's the favorite thing that you get to do at Grindstone right now? Because you have been a part of like production, you're mm -hmm. on sales, you're managing people. It's, yeah. it's a lot. What's your favorite That's thing? That's a good question. Um, I would say leading our sales team has to be one of my favorite things now. I started off producing, like I said, kind of like 2016, 2017. And I knew from an early from an early start in my career that I wasn't gonna be the guy that went on to like go film in Hollywood. I yeah. wasn't gonna be the person to become a director of photography for Warner Brothers Universal or anything. I just knew that wasn't my path. I was way more passionate about small business and mm -hmm. helping them and just just yeah, like I said, just helping them out and creating content that helps people make decisions. Like we create content that causes people to buy things yeah. and causes people to, um, it really just moves people to make a decision, whether it's donating to that uh, local charity, whether that's buying my product, whether it's buying my service, or even just listening to a show, mm -hmm. we're selling um, and we're, our content helps people sell stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of a disruptor. Yeah. And if it's enough of a disruptor, it'll, make a big swing in that person's business so yeah and i think people are looking for like that and, and the name grindstone comes from like it's a it's a tool to like sharpen your online presence right so like people need something that's standing out there that's making um first impressions for them yeah. in the best possible way because it's kind of like culture like you're gonna have culture regardless of if you think you have a company culture, you have a company culture. Yeah. You have a reputation regardless of if you think you have a reputation and what your reputation actually is versus what other people think it is can oftentimes be different things. So yeah. like we always look at it as having a video out there that's helping do that persuasion selling for you is the best possible way to do it. Persuasion, love mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah, get in their head what you want them to believe you are and perception is everything. Exactly, yeah. So. and. There's, That's what I love about marketing is. Yeah, you, you get an opportunity to yeah. help somebody show up better. Yeah. And there's there's a lot of power in that. So what does the process look like for somebody um, that wants to produce like a 30 second commercial? What, how does, how long would that take in general mm -hmm. if you have a timeline and kind of yeah. how much involvement are they I gonna have? I love this have? question. This is okay. one of my favorite questions. I get asked this on sales calls all the time. Okay, um, so, so I'm ready. This should be yeah, perfected. This is, this is great. So <laughs> the, the, question, the question is, um, like how long will it take? And a lot of times they ask how much money will it, will it be? And I always say, well, that depends. Um, Warner Brothers and Marvel Studios just put out a 30 second commercial for Doctor Strange 2. Um, that, that is heavily based upon who is in it, how long is it gonna take to film it? Um, how many locations are we going to? How long are we filming at those locations? How many people do we need to interview to get that done? Is Morgan Freeman narrating it? Is Tom Cruise jumping out of a helicopter <laughs> for the ending? Like all of those things play into how yeah. long something takes and how much money something is. And so it, it also, it, it really just depends on what the business needs. If the business needs to document the build of a high school or they're building this $150 million project and it takes four years to build it, well, it it's could take, four take years. at least four years to right? do the video. <laughs> yeah, and and you obviously can release in you can release segments every six months, whatever. Uh -huh. um, but it also just depends on what their project timeline is. But a lot of our projects, um, anything where the people are ready, the product is ready. A lot of times, they don't really take longer than thirty days to complete. Like, mm -hmm. like from meeting us to like you have a product Script is written. Yeah, like to you have film. A product. It's in the can. Yeah, cool. and a lot of times we're waiting on. <clears throat> A lot of times I would say we're waiting on customers more so than customers waiting on us. Um, yeah. We have a pretty rapid fulfillment process that we're pretty proud of. Um, Business owners are busy. They and, are. They know, have a lot like, of commitments and like we're one of them. Yeah. And we may not be the primary. Yeah. A lot of times we're not the primary. So, they can get yeah. pushed to a back burner. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we experience that too. Yeah, and we but, do that to other people's businesses too. Like yeah. that where we have our things that are urgent and important. Yeah. And then 
they, they are placing things at our at our feet that are important, but yeah. we have all these urgent and important things um, that, and that that's a really helpful tool to like help people manage all the things that are happening in their world. Um, I think it's, it's called the Eisenhower matrix, I think, of like urgent and important. Yes. And uh, unlocking that for people is like super helpful so they can yeah. figure out what, what really matters in front of them. Right. It might yeah. be important, but not urgent. <laughs> yeah, a lot and a lot of things um, when you're getting started, I think, in entrepreneurship are urgent, but not important. Yeah. And there are also several important things that are truly not urgent, but if you do not do them long term, yeah. like it's going to hurt. Yeah, you got to focus yeah. on the business. Mm -hmm. Well, we were talking about um, some really good books. Um, yeah. When we were just chatting earlier, what's your favorite book that you've read? Favorite book that I've read. Um, hmm. I would say the book that, like, I mean, I go back to every single day um, is definitely the Bible. I read New Living Translation, New Living Translation of the Bible, um, basically every single day. I think that, you know, God gave pretty specific set of rules, um, and that when you understand the Word, the Word understands you, and there's a way to like live your life in accordance to that book. And you know, the Book of Proverbs is literally all yeah. wisdom from yeah. King Solomon. So. He's the richest man in the world. He had everything. And there's all this wisdom inside of this book that like you can pull one sentence out of there. And if you apply that to your life, it can completely change it. From a business book perspective, um, I would say The E-Myth was one of like the most pivotal books for me that really like changed the way that I thought. Mm -hmm. And then sales wise, I know you didn't ask for three, but I'm giving them to you. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. These um, are excellent. Yeah, love sales it. wise, I would say Predictable Revenue is one okay. of the one of the best sales sales books and fanatical prospecting, kind of those two together. Um, because when in a business like if there's if there's not stress when it comes to lead generation that takes the stress out of literally everything else. Because if you have money, you can yeah. hire operators. If you have margin, you have profit. If you have um, revenue, you can do all like all sorts of different yeah. things with it. You can't but have a you business have, without it. Exactly, but if yeah. you have no profit, you have no control, yeah. and you have no freedom, really. Yeah. Like if, if Because if you have no profit, you become a slave to the thing that you tried to create, and yeah. that's a really bad way to live. So I think that that's been something I've been really trying to focus on in the last, even just really dialing in in the last six months um, is just putting a, a huge emphasis on outbound and inbound yeah. sales. It's great when you get to level up, um, you know, you focus on different areas of your business throughout yeah. time and like one area gets some attention and then you're like, okay, that's better. This yeah. area needs attention. And then you just kind of keep moving your way through the oh my company. Gosh. Yeah. And you then you circle it. back around. You nailed it. Yeah. And then by the time you fix that, it's like, okay, time okay, to fix the other things. All over. Yeah, that your, thing needs more help again. It's a constant <laughs> leveling up, right? Yeah. Um, we went through a three to four month sprint of fixing our uh, fulfillment system because we had added three virtual editors um, into our mix. So we have six full-time editors that are constantly creating content and editing content. It's a machine. Yeah. And so you have people that are remote, you have people that are in office, you have content that is remote only, and you have content that is in office only, and all has to live in the same ecosystem because it all yeah. has to get distributed and edited. So like, we had to focus for that. We had to focus on that for yeah. several months because How do we streamline this just process? saying, oh, use Dropbox is not enough. Like there's so many moving parts uh, yeah. to it. So man, that's, that's something that I think we're the most proud of. I would say that as a company is our fulfillment system and how, how dialed that is. That's because awesome. that gives you the confidence again to go out and sell. Right. If when you know the customer is going to have an awesome experience yeah. and you're going to deliver something they're going to love, then yeah. you can go out with confidence, look them in the eye and be like, we won't do what other people have done to you. You know, like yeah. they've been disappointed before. And that's so right. Yeah. That's so true. And I learned something actually about fulfillment as it relates to sales. And if fulfillment is broken in the entrepreneur's mind subconsciously, he will not sell or she will not sell subconsciously. So they will actually self-sabotage themselves because they are afraid of the end result of being overwhelmed or they're afraid of the idea that the content or that the, the fulfillment product, will not yeah. actually happen. So there's like this inner turmoil that yeah. they're facing. And as soon as you unlock that system and say, well, wait, we've, we've got this in spades. Why are we not selling this more? It sounds really obvious, but like yeah. think about how many times like you've subconsciously slowed yourself down 
So I know like exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so self sabotage is a real thing for entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and but there's always a reason guiding it, and so you have to turn around and look at okay, what is making me feel like this? Because I can't sell right now. I don't know what's going on. I got to get to the bottom of it. And yeah. then if you do fix whatever that is, then you can go back out, and it's just. So true. I've experienced what you just said, and it's if you haven't experienced it, you might think it's crazy, but it's for real. So yeah, hundred percent. Great advice. Hundred percent real. Yeah. There's oh man, so much truth to that. Yeah, <laughs> I love how um, things just start falling into place, you know. And when you get everything working and functioning smoothly, then the business comes to you. You're not having to work as hard, too. Yeah, and when you like there's distribution, monetization, and acquisition. Like if you're acquiring customers, um, you know, if, if your system for acquiring customers is broken, then the distribution and monetization won't matter. Yeah. If you are, if you got your acquisition of customers down, your distribution and your monetization are the, the two things that are gonna need the most help and the most work. So obviously you fix yeah. one, you go to the other. And if you, don't fix the distribution side, then you will hurt the monetization side long term, yeah. which will ultimately affect the acquisition side. Because if you do bad work for more people, less people will work with you. Yeah. And so it's just it's a balance between it's those three a triangle. Things, yeah. Right? Um, and if one of those is broken, you feel it. Like you know it's broken. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, the one that can take the most pressure off of all three of those though, is getting acquisition figured out. How do we profitably acquire mm -hmm. customers in our sleep? Yeah. That's the question every entrepreneur should be asking themselves. Yeah, agreed. It's great advice. Yeah. Any final advice for our viewers? Um, yeah, I, I mean, if you guys want to, if, if you're looking to just learn more and you want to be in a group of like-minded individuals, we have a Facebook group, it's called Iron Sharpens Iron. Um, it's Iron, Sharp, Iron Sharpens Iron Entrepreneur Group is the actual full name of it. And I, I share content in there all the time, write stuff in there. I love just, it's kind of like my holding tank of just information where, that I'm you know putting out consistently. And then um, I've got a podcast, it's called Spark to Fire. I interview yeah. awesome people like Renee um, and just people that have done incredible things in their business and also just they carry a light with them. You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. I would say that have been on the show, they carry an extraordinary ability to just like make people happy and fulfilled around them yeah. um, on top of being successful from a business perspective. They have, they have success relationally, but they also have success business-wise. Yeah. My favorite one that I've listened to was Tim Clare, and oh, he's, he's just an awesome guy. And you're like you're saying, he does have like that light. And I always tell oh. him he has this like innate ability to make everybody feel like a somebody. So true. Like everyone is better than he is, and yeah. you feel like you are when you're with him somehow. It's crazy. That's so true. Yeah. He's, uh, the, one of the biggest takeaways I have from that show was when he said, um, "I don't. What did he say? I don't try and become like." it's not a matter of like becoming wealthy, it's a matter of becoming valuable and oh, yeah. being somebody that brings value no matter what. And like, I think about how Tim is so giving of his time. Mm -hmm. Like he's so, so giving of his time to be on all these different boards when he doesn't, yeah. doesn't have to be. Like right. he doesn't have to be on any of them. A lot of, and I don't know how many of them are paid, unpaid or whatever, but I know he does a lot for free and just gives so much value and wisdom. He carries so much wisdom with yeah. him. And so I really look up to him in a big way. And, and that's the the people that I love talking to. And mm -hmm. I like this conversation is super, super awesome. So um, it has been awesome. I love it. This is yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for coming yeah. down from Omaha to be on the show. And everyone needs to go and like, uh, follow, share everything yeah. from Grindstone and the podcast uh, Spark to Fire. And yeah. definitely um, stay in touch with Landon. He's going to be doing some great things in life. So Hope I'm excited so. to see where it goes. Yes. Thank you guys. I appreciate yeah. this. This is an awesome interview. You did a great job. Awesome. Thanks, Landon. Bye, everybody.